something good did indeed come to the Judy Hoyer Montessori School in Landover recently, as the students sang operatic selections in both English and Italian. Whether it was preschoolers dressed as chickens doing their version of the Little Red Hen, or third graders in self-designed capes doing a modern take on Don Pasquale and the Marriage of Figaro, the school's lunchroom was transformed, if only for an afternoon, into Carnegie Hall. It's a way to introduce them to a new art form, an art form that hopefully will get them to open their minds up to other things. I mean, I think that we owe it to our children to expose them to as many things as possible. So what I try to do is make opera accessible to them mm. and get them to see that it's something that everybody can enjoy. And while he didn't profess to be an opera aficionado, Congressman Steny Hoyer, who was looking on and whose late wife's name graces the school, did endorse the idea that all music is the language of learning. Was Judy a big opera fan, and are you an opera fan? I'm a big country music fan, <laughs> frankly, Dave. Uh, I like some opera, um, but I must say I'm not uh, an expert at, by any stretch of the imagination. The fact that these kids, who uh, I'll bet not one of them comes from a, a home, but I didn't come from a home, that listen to opera on the radio. So they're exposed to something new and exciting and enriching. And that's a wonderful experience for young people. That's what. That's what being young and being in school is all about. It sure is. And you know, Dave, one of the things that uh, uh, educators tell us is the study of music enhances learning capability. And while the Hoyer students were singing operatically about the three bears, over at Glen Arden Woods Elementary School in Lanham, the singers looked and sounded far more menacing. No home, all together, boys of color time. Dressed as pirates, the students were part of a vicarious school-wide trip to the Caribbean. Following months of research and clever artwork, Glen Arden's tour guides took visitors from the Bahamas to Barbados to Haiti to Jamaica, all without ever leaving the school. Taste the Barbados! How's it taste? Delicious! Delicious. <laughs> well, in Barbados, we love punch. It's, an, it's a West Indian thing, and punch comes from the Indian word panch, which means five. So there are five key ingredients. A little bit of sweet, a little bit of sour, uh, a little spice, and a little bitter. Did I say five? I named four. And um, something strong. But we didn't add the strong part today, just a strong spirit that's in there. Did they do a nice job today? They did a fabulous job today. I was really impressed with the singing, the dances and just the school coming together and everything that we put up in this amount of time, I was just impressed. But we do it every year, so, you know, yeah. I loved it. And if some of the teachers, like Miss Payne, had Caribbean pedigrees, so too did the students. Your grandpa lives where, on Long Island? Uh -huh. And my great-great-grandmother lives here in On Cat. Cat Island. So you're going to have to go someday, right? I went there when I was a tiny baby. Oh, wow. Was, wow. I, now I, was born, I was born in Bermuda. Wow. So you're a real Caribbean girl. Yeah, you look... And I got these bracelets from when I was a little girl. Just beautiful. All girls at, in, in Bermuda wear these. They do? While Scarlett had on bracelets, other students of the pirate variety wore accessories that were a bit more sinister. I like the hook back there. Show us your hook. Did the crocodile get your hand? No. <laughs> Pirate looks and lore were everywhere, with one captain setting the record straight on one bit of pirate vocabulary. Pirates do not say R. <laughs> that, um, yeah, they, that all came from movie pirates. What do you like about being a pirate? What do you like about it? Treasure. Treasure, the gold doubloons. What do you like about it? Getting lots of money. Getting lots of money. 
did any of you have to walk the plank? Do pirates walk the plank? No. No, that that's another been... thing they made up, huh? It has not been proven yet. But Glen Arden's cruise through the Caribbean was about more than just getting gold doubloons and painting pictures of paradise. For having raised over $5,000 last year for the earthquake victims in Haiti, the students focused on that island's plight and its ongoing efforts at recovery in particular. The structure of this house is not really strong, and I can see that there's, um, the, the outside of the house is damaged. All the housing was made out of like bricks and stone, so if it collapsed, it kind of ruined your chance of surviving the earthquake. And most of the houses are messed up now, and some of them actually are made out of soft materials now, so that if it does fall again, you won't get hurt. Has it changed you any? It has changed me. It makes me not take my, what I have for granted. It is dear to our heart, but we didn't really understand and see the devastation because we weren't there. Mm -hmm. But the earthquake room for Haiti mm -hmm. just brings it home and it uh, lets us see it's more work to be done. So what lessons the students learned as they sailed off into summer? From reenacting a disaster, to playing members of the famed Jamaican bobsled team, to learning that opera can be as modern as rap, Prince George's students are undoubtedly traveling in the right direction. For TV 96 and 38, this is Dave Zarin.